February, 1979, Pasadena, California. Lights burn throughout the night in the science offices, control centers, and computer areas of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Hundreds of scientists and engineers convene here, drawn worldwide from research centers and universities. What I want to do, I want to go auto back here, put in one FRO, and all the way through the time period with one start. Makes sense. By the end of the month, photographers, television crews, and other members of the press arrive. They are drawn to the laboratory by two Voyager spacecraft, electronic robots sent by NASA to explore the giant planets Jupiter and Saturn. A little while ago, I heard the remark that uh, images... Voyager 1's exploration of Jupiter is continued in the summer of 1979 when Voyager 2 approaches Jupiter and its moons. And in 1980 and 1981, each spacecraft explores Saturn and its moons. Their cameras transmit 60,000 photographs of these strange new worlds. Subtle details not visible in the photographs are computer enhanced in the laboratory. Scientific data are received from a mix of instruments that probe the planets and the fleet of moons that escort them, sensing magnetic fields and measuring violent spheres of radiation. The teams of scientists meet daily to review this flood of data, to cope with the new and unexpected. And team members report their findings to the waiting reporters and through them to the world. If, if this is a shear zone, the reporter and scientist weld a close relationship in a mutual need to understand and communicate what the voyagers discover. Rather than tilted the other way. And that's and wow. the estimate is that the crater is 15 kilometers deep and the central peak is 15 kilometers high. Read it. One tends not to believe the reality of what is there, says one scientist of the Voyager discoveries. Now, I don't think I really understand how these three images are related to each other. We've seen things that are different, says another. And things that are begging for answers we haven't got. Um, yeah, but where is this edge on this view? Okay. Where else we gonna go? Oh, beautiful. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. Just as Galileo's discovery of the large Jupiter moons left a scientific legacy for all of us, says Dr. Edward Stone, project scientist, so do the stunning discoveries by Voyager provide a similar legacy for future generations. Voyager team of engineers and scientists spent seven years designing and planning for the exploration of Jupiter and Saturn. The spacecraft are endowed with intricate logic systems and when necessary can make their own decisions without contact from Earth. They carry instruments for 11 science investigations of the outer planets and their moons. The radio link with Earth is channeled through a large dish-shaped antenna that dominates the spacecraft. Two television cameras are the eyes of the spacecraft. They can be aimed with great precision. These instruments detect the unseen forces that swirl around these distant worlds. September 18th, 1977, Voyager is seven million miles from Earth. Its cameras turn back to record the blue Earth and crescent moon together in a haunting photograph of our home in the solar system. 
Fourteen months later, Voyager 1's cameras transmit the first photographs of Jupiter. February 5th, 1979. From a distance of more than 17 million miles, Jupiter and three of its moons are caught in a single frame. At 12 million miles, Jupiter's clouds of gases and ice particles are seen to swirl and twist in strange new patterns invisible from Earth. From a series of more than 4,000 photographs, a time-lapse movie is made that covers 10 Jovian days. The atmosphere is more complex than had been thought. The trajectories of Voyagers 1 and 2 enable the spacecraft to obtain photographs which provide different aspects of each of the four Galilean moons. Europa, the size of our moon, resembles a cracked billiard ball. But the complex markings are curiously flat, like stripes painted on the surface. Its icy crust is thought to float on an ocean melted by interior heat. Io is the most spectacular of the Jovian moons. Its vivid, mottled surface with oddly shaped blotches of color mystify the scientists. Surely the strangest object ever seen in our solar system. Ganymede is as large as the planet Mercury. Its dark, ancient terrain is spotted with white impact scars. Adjacent areas are cut by jumbled patterns of grooves and ridges. Callisto is the outermost of the four large moons. Every inch of its surface bears the scars of billions of years of cratering. Two scientific discoveries occur during the first flyby of Jupiter. On March 4, 1979, Voyager 1's cameras photograph a faint ring of particles surrounding Jupiter. Several months later, Voyager 2 photographs the dark side of Jupiter. Backlighting by the sun produces a spectacular view of the ring. It is ribbon-like, 3,600 miles wide. Jupiter now joins Saturn and Uranus to become the third planet known to possess a ring system. A second discovery solves the mysteries of Io's bizarre surface. On March 8, 1979, Voyager 1 takes a remarkable photograph of Io. During a routine study of optical navigation, an engineer sees what at first appears to be a crescent cloud. Scientists soon realize that it can only be a volcanic plume erupting from Io a huge fountain of molten sulfur, gas, and bits of rock surging upward against the moon's weak gravity. A re-examination of Io photographs reveals other active volcanoes. It's the first seen beyond Earth. If we could obtain closer views of some of the Galilean moons, each would present a strikingly different surface. Through an artist's rendering, we approach Callisto, the moon most distant from Jupiter. Its surface is saturated with craters dating back to a torrential bombardment period four billion years ago. Although this is a dead world, its craters, for the scientist, are a record of the past history of the Jovian system. A great cataclysmic impact basin extends for a thousand miles. Since Callisto is half water ice, the basin, unable to hold its shape, slowly slumped back into the moon's crust until only traces of the surrounding ridges remain. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. Long parallel ridges and valleys form chaotic crisscrossing patterns created by cracking and shifting of the crust. This grooved terrain borders on regions of ancient surface, vast brown ice fields covered with the remnants of impact craters.
Jupiter fills the sky when viewed from the surface of Io, the innermost and smallest of the Galilean moons. Its bizarre colored surface is an ever-changing pattern of the vivid reds and yellows of frozen sulfur. Scattered across the surface are the vents of inactive volcanoes. Many of the calderas are dark in color, filled with lakes of frozen black sulfur. In the distance is an active volcano. It erupts, spewing hot sulfur and gas 200 miles above the surface and falling back in a plume that spreads over a distance of 600 miles. No impact craters are visible on Io because constant eruptions resurface the moon with sulfur and bits of rock. Surface flows that originate in dark volcanic centers spread to fan shapes about 60 miles across or leave long snake-like patterns. In the polar region are mountains several miles in height and regions that appear to be made of stacked layers of material. These cliffs are created by constant erosion from liquid sulfur compounds escaping from underground and leaving snow white patches. Jupiter has a huge magnetic field. The field would expand symmetrically in all directions if it were not impacted by the solar wind, a streaming flow of particles from the sun. A bow shock is created where the solar wind meets the magnetic field. Behind the bow shock, the field is warped and turned inward upon itself by the pressure of the wind. It is formed into a long tail that extends half a billion miles to the orbit of Saturn. As Io moves in its orbit around Jupiter, it creates a unique relationship with the planet's magnetic field. In this polar view, Jupiter spinning on its axis every ten and a half hours drags its magnetic field and trapped radiation with it. But Io's orbit is slower, 43 hours. As a result, clouds of trapped radiation in the magnetic field sweep past Io and strip away one ton of sulfur and oxygen atoms each second into space. These atoms form a torus, a huge ring of electrically charged particles trapped by the magnetic field. An electrical current of three million amperes flows along magnetic field lines linking moon and planet. Torus material flattens the magnetic field and flows away from Jupiter to create the current sheet, a thin sheet of charged particles which distorts the field near the magnetic equator. The Voyager scientists had been saturated with surprises at Jupiter, and they approached Saturn with cautious, open minds.